There is an alternative way to give you some motivation for using the cash flow worksheet to help compute net present value and internal rate of return. I wanted to give you an example of a typical type of problem with equating a couple of present values and asking to figure out uh, how to uh, figure out how to, what the loan amount must have been to be able to pay off. So let's just go through this example and see how we can use the cash flow worksheet to help us solve this problem rather than, let's say, a more traditional way to solve it. All right, so uh, in this problem, we've got an annual effective interest rate of I that we don't know, and we're paying off a loan of the amount of K. Again, we don't know. However, we are told that we can pay this loan off in a couple of different ways. One is to pay 475 now and pay 475 in one year. The other way is to pay off 570 in two years and 570 in three years, and we're asked to calculate the value of the loan. Now, again, traditionally, we would set up an equation, which we're going to do here anyway. So we've got present values of the, these cash flows of the 475. So we've got 475 now and 475 in a year. So bring it back one year using our V notation. That has to be the same thing as 570 in two years and 570 in three years. So we've got those two cash flows brought back two years and brought back three years respectively. All right, so ordinarily we would solve this equation. So when you solve this equation, we would set everything equal to zero and try to figure out what V is. So we would move these cash flows over. But now notice that this looks a lot like a net present value button, or excuse me, a net present value problem or an internal rate of return problem. So notice that we can think of this as cash flows going out, cash flows coming in, and having a present value of zero. So we can use our cash flow worksheet and our internal rate of return functionality of the calculator to help us figure out what the interest rate is. So let's do that. Let's enter the cash flow worksheet. If we want to make sure that everything's cleared out, we can do second clear worksheet so that everything is cleared out for us. All right, so our initial cash flow, that first one at time zero here, would be a 475, and it's going out. Hit enter. Our cash flow at time one would also be 475, and it's going out. Hit enter. It has a frequency of one, so we'll just scroll down. 570 is coming in, so it's positive. We'll hit enter scroll down and the same idea with the one at time three we've got a 570 cash flow and it has one frequency again all right so now we'll go over to our internal rate of return and hit compute and get 9.44 9.445 as our internal rate of return so let's go ahead and store that button excuse me store that value now this is the interest rate that we should be able to use for each set of cash flows and move back to time zero to figure out the amount of loan. So again, let's go ahead and use our cash flow worksheet to do that because that's going to be the present value or net present value, if you will, in this particular case. So let's go back over to the cash flow worksheet. Uh, let's clear out the worksheet. We've got cash flows of 475 at time zero and a cash flow of 475 at time one. So now go over to our net present value functionality. We're going to recall the interest rate that we have and we're going to put that in for the I. And now scroll down to the NPV and hit compute and it gets us a net present value of 908 and 61 cents. So again we could have done this again the more standard way of solving this cubic equation which is not that hard. But we could have done it that way and plug back in. But again, we could have done this problem completely on the calculator just by using our cash flow worksheet.